But I can tell you that from my own perspective, and when I have dealt with this type of a challenge, in retrospect, I saw that this challenge, this layoff actually positioned me in the right place mentally and physically and in my career so that I could start thinking about other things that I could do that would bring me intellectual pleasure and would provide me with the necessary intellectual stimulation that would allow me to be, have an enjoyable life, have an enjoyable career. We want to also gather information about different regions and individual organizations. Like, are they hiring? Did they just have a big layoff? Don't think that just because company X had a huge layoff, that might mean that they're not hiring. Oftentimes companies have layoffs of hundreds and they immediately start hiring back. And sometimes they hire back the people they laid off. So don't take that as a necessarily as a negative, but also take a look did your organization or that particular industry just get a huge government grant that could mean that they're expanding So how can I get this information? I'm going to set up Google News Alerts. So not just Google Alerts, but do Google News Alerts. Take a look at the news that's coming out of that geography, out of that region, and take a look at the job ads in the major publications. What departments, what hospitals, what universities, what industries, and what divisions within those industry organizations are building capacity? And note what is missing. What departments are not building capacity? What organizations are growing? and what aren't. So take a look at that. But the Google News Alerts is going to be very useful to be able to do that highly localized news search how a great story can really help to draw in your audience, to get them to pay attention to you and build the advocacy that you want. Whenever you give a speech, you want it to be an engaging experience for that audience and you want to build that straight from the beginning. And so that's why I told you this story, this tale of this physicist who now works uh, in, in the food business. And so I hope you got that, that the sense of what you can do when you bring, when you put together a story and when you actually make your speech into a story. And that's what I'm going to try and do for the rest of our time together today is really build a story around what it is that I'm trying to communicate, which is all the tips and techniques and tactics of how you can be successful when you're giving a speech. A couple of design tips. We're going to use a design tool, a uh, computing program that makes sense for us. I like using PowerPoint to design my poster because then you can just blow it up. But if you're more comfortable on Adobe Illustrator or others, it's your choice. You run the show. Total words. Remember I said this isn't your dissertation. It's not a treatise. It's not a book on your poster. It is an abstract. And so the total amount of words on the entire poster is going to be anywhere from 500 to 800 words. And I think even 800 might be on the high end. You might want to go even lower than that. But the point is, is that it's telling a tale. You, the, po the poster presenter, are actually going to fill in the details. But in industry, success is defined by market-driven problem solving. So that means that the problem solving that you're doing, the value that you're creating has to lead to a customer-centric 
solution. In other words, a product or a service that somewhere down the line, someone or something, meaning an entity or a company, will pay for. So money has to be shown. That's what we mean by profits over cachet. It's show me the money. The problems in industry are all about increasing sales, cutting costs, and beating the competition. So we have to recognize that. We have to understand what does industry consider to be important. Then we have to start wondering, learning about what our selected industry is. So we're going to map out with the exhibitors, we're going to map out actually where we're going to visit and who we're going to visit and who we're going to visit first and second and third. And we're also going to, and this is really important, and a lot of people don't think to do this, they tend to attend conferences in a very sort of passive way. You know, that's why they read the uh, scientific program on the airplane going or the night before, or they read it when they actually are handed the paper copy of it. And that's the first time they look at it. Um, but what really is useful for you is if you read the scientific program and the, the whole website about a month or so in advance, you can start identifying the key people that you want to meet. And these could include speakers, they could include board members of these professional societies, because believe me, all the board members, all the staff are going to be at these conferences. Then we're also going to tidy up our online presence. And just like when you are going to sell your house, you're not going to put up the for sale sign until you actually clean out your tub and, and put all the nice landscaping, clean up the in front of the house, the inside of the house, everything. It has to be tidied up before you put a for sale sign. Just like that, before we start job searching, we have to tidy up our online presence. We go on the caveat that cyberspace is forever space, as my mother says. Very important. So anything that you have up there is there to be there forever. So be enthusiastic, be polite, be respectful. Discuss their needs in terms of your experiences using their vocabulary, just like with the cover letter. Show them that you'll be able to jump in now by giving them specific examples. When they say, give me an example where you had uh, a conflict with a team member, how did you solve that? What they're asking you is, tell me about a problem you solved associated with that. What was your solution? And what were the results of your solution? And how did that help you prepare to add value to my team right now? So those, those four pieces that we talked about earlier, you're going to be emphasizing with every response to every question. And so what happens is, is this hidden platter of job opportunities, assignments, short-term projects, even appointments to have coffee with somebody or apply for awards or, or opportunities to apply for jobs that are hidden that haven't even been advertised is open to you once you start networking. And so that's why you want to network and you want to be diversified in your networking in that you don't want to just network with scientists and engineers because there's another side of networking and that is that you want a constant diversity of sources of inspiration that can help you, that can you can call upon, that can help you think about your career and your discipline in new ways. And that's also why networking is absolutely necessary to advance science and engineering.